Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be starting my two-part tutorial series on how I make my 3D bases and 3D printing stuff. So this first video is going to be basically of the setup and I'm going to show you guys all the tools and things I do, things like that, and then the second video will be the actual building of something. So for starters, I have Blender 2.9, a brand new version of Blender has just come out. Um, the only difference with the newer versions is uh, maybe the, look. Uh, actually I don't know what the new one has, but essentially throughout all the versions on the side you see all these buttons. These things ultimately are the same. Uh, maybe some small details change here and there, but for the most part you just got to know these simple basic things in here, these top bars and stuff like that. Uh, so that, that's just all you need to know as far as different versions go. All this stuff should apply throughout uh, all now and all future versions, but I use version 2.9. All right, so one of the first things we have to do is set the scene up for, well, so one of the things is that uh, everything you build in Blender actually has a physical size comparison. And so right now we're probably building in feet or inches. So we need to set this to millimeters. Otherwise, when you try to bring your files over to print, uh, you're going to be printing something larger than you can even uh, fit on your build plate, most likely. So the first thing we have to do, we go to here, then we go to units. So the button we press is this teardrop that has a circle and a little circle above it. We're going to select metric. Then we're going to set our unit scale to 0 0.001. We're going to have our length in millimeters. That's going to be important for right here so this box yeah so all this stuff is now going to be in millimeters the units and things we build are going to be in millimeters It'll be very useful and I believe it's up here a uh, grid yeah so up here 0 0.001 boom and we have our grid set so this is one of the most important things so this way we're going to be building in something we can print because uh, all our designs and stuff is going to be in uh, millimeters. You don't want to design your thing in inches. You don't want to build a titan-sized towel warrior. I mean, you can. It just take a while to print it and in multiple pieces. But that's the first thing we have to do. All right. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to get a small little tool for here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in 3D in the search bar, and you'll see this 3D print toolbox. You want to select it, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And basically what's it going to do is it's going to have a little bar on the side that is going to help us with our object. So we select our object, you see this little thing on here, 3D print. Essentially what this does is when you, um, after you build, like sculpt whatever, um, you may not notice this, but there could be little holes everywhere, or there may be some meshes overlapping. And this is basically a check all is going to find out if there's issues or stuff, and you can have cleanup where it'll fix things. Now, this overall 90, 99 times out of 100 is going to be useful to you and help you, but there are some times where it could accidentally break the model. So if uh, you do this and then you see some meshes or holes in your thing just suddenly appear, it rarely happens, but it has happened. Just press Control Z to undo it, but this should make your stuff uh, better to print. And there's sometimes when I create things in the th Blender, and when I go over to uh, bring it to print software and turn it into an SDL that can be printed, sometimes all of a sudden these things like appear in the build in the build that never existed. I never sculpted them, but it just created something like these weird supports or things out of nowhere that destroy the model. I print a brick, and so this actually will fix that. So this is an important thing to know. It rarely backfires. It's rare, so that's just something you need to be aware of. All right, now that we got that setup out of the way, we now have to, well, actually figure out how to use this. Unfortunately, this is a software, and it takes a while to use. It's like, yeah, WASD, that isn't gonna do anything. So what we do, so first let's start off with just basically moving around. All right, so middle mouse button, click and hold it, and all of a sudden, I can move my mouse and I rotate the screen with middle mouse button. Yeah, right click brings up a small menu here, left click does nothing, click on things. That's pretty much it. You grab something, I select it. So this is important. So layout, this is where we basically add objects in and we move them around physically into this like 3D space. Also, mouse wheel in and out. All right, that's the basic stuff. So I want to move this, switch this to this, and we got 
these vectors. You can grab this and move it around. If you don't like something you did, Control Z, it goes back. Simple stuff like that. All right, now other things in layout. This is stuff specifically to layout, which is where we add stuff. So if you press the S key or S button, you can increase the scale or the size of it. And you will see on the right, right here, the millimeters change. So the physical size changes. Second thing, if you press G, you grab it and you can move it around how you wish. However, this is based off your camera, which is a bit irritating. And so if you press A, you select everything in the screen. And we don't want to. All right, so here's another very nice trick. So if you're going to grab it or if you want to change the scale, whichever, if you press another button, Y, Z, or X afterwards, you're only going to affect it in a certain direction. So press S for scaling. We're just going to move the scale up. Okay, so this is every direction. I press the Y button. Boom, all of a sudden, we're only moving the Y. All right, instead I'm going to press X, switch that to X. Okay, now I'm moving the X scale. Okay, how about Z? Now I'm moving the Z scale. Okay, right click to undo what you did. <coughs> Left click will cement it. G to grab. If I press X, I can move it only on the X. If I press Y, it's only going to Y, it's only going to move on the Y. And if I grab it and then press Z, it's only going to move on the Z. This is important <coughs> to note for grabbing. And yeah, and so if you want to rotate, you can press this. Uh, for a quick guidance, you can just press R and then you'll rotate it however. And since it's based off the camera, that can get issue uh, issues. I can show you how to fix the camera in a moment, but right now we're just going through this move, rotate, stuff like that. And scale, yeah, transform. Yeah, all these simple things. So now let's focus on the camera. So on your D-pad, so I press the one, boom. Press three on the right. Press five, get, um, so there's orthographic, and then there's this, which is, okay, so this, you can see in 3D, you can see the things move around. I press 5, immediately becomes this flat image. So 1, 3, 7, 9, and it's hard to tell. Okay, so this is up. I press 7. I'm looking straight down. If I press 9, I'm looking right from the bottom. All right, so to fix the camera, so on number three only takes you to the right, seven only takes you to the top, I believe so, yeah. Nine takes you onto the other side, so if you want to reverse it, so one will take you straight to front, facing the front, three will take you to the right, hold control and press it, and it'll take you to the opposite side. So hold control will take the camera to the opposite side. So seven will be up top, hold control, and seven will take you underneath to the bottom. It's really hard to tell. Actually, you know what? Hold on one second. I have a cunning plan. Do, do, do. All right, now we can tell what's what. All right, now we're on this side. That's, that's up. Hold control in seven. That's down. All right, easy. All right, now that's done. Let's show. So grabbing an object, how to delete it, just select it and press delete. Now it's gone. And now let's hold shift a and brings up this menu and you can rapidly just add a item so it's just meshes so cube which is a cube shift a circle which is flat and a circle this is irritating to deal with so i'll just delete that you can build off of it but it's a perfect circle uh, uv sphere this is a solid sphere but it has a lot of faces and then shift a icosphere which is a less poly sphere then you have cylinder, voila. Uh, yep. And then you have shift A. What do we got? A cone, if you want that. And shift A, a torus, if you want this. So these are all the objects you can have. Oops, press A, and I'm going to just delete them. Also, uh, this little thingy that was up here and the th triangle that was there, that was a camera and a light. We don't need that, so you can just delete that from the beginning. All right, now, for demonstration, let's say we have okay, a plane here. We move it over to there. We add a cube. I talk about it. We add a cube. <laughs> we add a cube. Delete this. And we move it wherever off to the side, just whatever. And But then later we want to go and like center our camera on it. So you select whatever object you want, just whichever, and you press the period button on your keypad. Immediately centers the entire camera off of it. 
but now it's off center you don't have the grid you're not in the center there how do you fix this select the object you want press alt and G and it'll send it back to where the cursor is which is usually the center and you can press period on that and then boom it recenters your camera there so that's easy and done all right and how to uh, so this marker here can actually be uh, set around or moved around so just in case you actually do that which you never want to you can get the 3d cursor and you just set its location the X Y and Z to zero like if I set this to five that's gonna move over to here and this is where it spawns everything. So if you don't like that and you want to reset it to the grid, just do that and like so. All right, so now that that's kind of done, what we have to do is show you how to do the editor. So that was just layout. So now let's focus on editing, which is we'll grab an item, any item, tab is a quick way to do it, or you can use this thing up here, object mode, edit mode, and it brings into here. So you press A, to select everything all the faces so these three right here are very important these top three this you can select these little corners individually or press this and it turns into lines and you can select and grab entire lines or you grab this and you can grab whole faces and yeah so that depends on what you how you want to edit so the next thing you have to do is if you hold shift you can grab and click right through yeah. Alright, and then if you hold control, it'll select all the nodes or things in the way. So, <clears throat> let me show you this. So first, let's delete this, and let's add something of a bit more complexity. Let's add a, a cone, yes. Alright, so we send our camera, let's move that up, so let me show you something. So in edit mode, let's get rid of this, let's select a line. So let's say you just want to rapidly select a bunch of lines or these things all in along. So let's just grab one, hold control, let's grab something further down here, and boom, it selects everything along the way. I also selected that, so hold shift to undo that. I see another bunch of lines, hold control, and touch that if I can grab it. What that? Darn it. There we go. So shift to grab something and add it to it, and then control to grab everything on the way. Uh, sometimes this fails, and sometimes it'll accidentally grab something you don't want to. And so once you like grabbed everything in a way, it'll select the face. So hold shift to undo certain things while holding everything else. If you just left click, it'll undo everything and just select that one thing. So this is just a quick way of rapidly selecting a bunch of stuff. All right. And now that we're here, we'll show deleting pieces. So this whole thing here. So let's start off with this. So let's say I grab this, I press delete, and I get the choice of what to delete. Deleting vertices will delete that one little vertice and everything it's attached to. So if you do that, you could accidentally delete a ton. Control Z to undo it. All right. So let me grab a line this time. Let's grab this line and delete. And I just select edges. Boom. It selects, it deletes that line and everything that was attached to it. Control Z to undo that. Let's grab this face and let's delete this face. And boom, it just will delete that face. Now, now that's out of the way. It's simple and easy to do. Uh, you could accidentally cause some trouble, so always be prepared to Control Z if you, because sometimes you just find out that something is connected to something you didn't expect. And so uh, let's put all this in the center of the camera. So I'll grab one of these little edges and I'll press period and I'll center the camera off of this. Alrighty then. Now we're going to go to edges and here's how you can fill in these gaps. So select one edge, hold shift, select the other edge. Oh, well, there's an edge down here. So let's grab that. And if you press the button F on your keypad, immediately fills it in. This will be good if you have gaps or anything because uh, in the 3D printer, if there are gaps, the thing will treat it as an open area and will, well, there'll be nothing built there, it could cause structural problems or it could fail a print. So right now, just so you know, if I took this cone and just printed it as is, this thing will be a solid object. Now, if I delete a face and delete that, yeah, face, now all of a sudden there's a gap in there and the thing will treat uh, these very incredibly thin walls as part of it and this was supposed to be hollow so it'll print the base and it'll print these very thin walls up. But if this is f filled, 
up, it'll treat this whole thing as a solid. A good thing to note when uh, designing your stuff. All right, now let me show you the basic tool set for sculpting. So let's grab whichever object you want to use. Switch to editing mode with tab, or you can use this bar up here. All right, uh, let's build the letter T. All right, so first, let's switch to faces. Let's do something simple. So we'll grab that. Now what you can do is you can press this, and then you can select the thing you just grabbed, and you can just pull it out. You can move it however you like. So let's pull it, according to this, let's base off this grid, let's pull this up to here. There, nice. Now let's do the other side. Let's grab that, press 7 on the camera to change it to something easy, and let's move this all the way up to here. Now you can also use uh, this when you're grabbing stuff to alter what you're doing. So minus 3 will turn it perfectly to there, or you can do regular 3, which will reduce it all the way to here, so there is a plus and minus axis. Yes. All right. We've done that. However, if you notice, there is nothing down here. Now, there are many ways you can uh, do this, uh, manage stuff like this. So uh, probably a better way of handling these things, these faces. So I'm going to actually delete this because I find it faster. I'm going to add another cube. And so now t press tab, take it to edit mode. All right. So I'm going to grab this face, and I'm going to press E. E, basically, if you press this button, it creates a whole new uh, series of pieces. So I just pressed E, and then I right-clicked, and now, boom, I have this whole new thing. So I can move it around however I want. I can press E again, move it around like that. So I can scale that up here, left-click, extrude again, boom, however I like. So, do, do, do. <coughs> so back to the beginning. I grab this, I press E to create a whole new set. So if I was just in vertices, whatever vertices I select and I press E, I'll create a whole new set of that, and then I can drag that out like so. I could do like so as well here, press E, and then drag this single thing out. <laughs> Bring it around here, probably, oh yeah, grab these two things, press F, create a line between there, Grab these lines here with switching it to a line, press F there, create an entire panel right there. That's one way to do that. I'm just showing the different things you can do. You just have to be aware of all the tools that is at your disposal. All right, and then you can create better things. All right, so now let's focus. So here, I press E, I can extrude it, right click to undo that, and then I move it out. I press seven to adjust the camera again, bring it up to here, then over here, press seven, Grab, oh, yeah. I press E to create a new set of pieces. I drag it out, and boom. Now, the difference is we have faces here now, all these new faces. So I'm going to grab this, press 1 to face it straight on. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to, oh, crap. <coughs> so that would happen. So if I pull this down, everything else is going to move with it. So how we do that is we just press E, create a whole new set of bits, and now this moves down and perfectly handles there. All right, I press tab or to go to object mode again, and boom, we have the letter T. Now, here's some important things you're going to have to note. You see this center? This is the center of gravity or the center for this model. If we import it into the STL, it's going to be centered like this. Of course, their software will probably fix it, but if we want to move it around, we want to rotate this, it's going to be around this center. So one thing we can do is we can right-click on our object, and we can set origin. This is the center. And so we can have the, this is important, this is going to be important if you're going to make like bases and stuff like that. So geometry to origin. So this will put the center piece right in the center of the mass. So I do that, boom, right there. Right click, I can set uh, the origin to the current geometry. So I'll move that right here, right click, boom, or dang it, wrong thing. Origin to 3D cursor, yeah, that's it. So now the center is, based off where the cursor is, I can move this to wherever I like, off like this, set origin for 3D cursor, and this is just small stuff for uh, for helping you build stuff, because if you want to make it out of multiple parts, and so we're going to set origin to, uh, that's origin to geometry, alt G to center it, 
And and now let's say if we want the base to be there, we can just grab this, move this up, get it right there. We can use this. I'll type three there to make it. Oh crap, it's not perfect. All right, then we'll bring it up as best we can. Right click on this, origin to 3D cursor, and boom. And now that's the base. All right. All right, now that I got that out of the way, I want to show you, now we're going to start going into more important tools. So now I'm going to show you how to import pictures. Well, for me, I just click, the, I have multiple screens, so I grab and I just drag in. Boom, I have now a picture. Now this is a very important picture. This is, actually let me rotate this, 90 degrees. So pictures can be useful for reference if you're building off something, but a very important thing is measurement of size very important so you see here now I see this picture like so I grab this and move this back a bit this picture is a picture of the patriarchs base bottom piece that connects to the base and I have these millimeters so you can't see it but like there's like a skull or something underneath here and so this is a perfect representation of the actual physical size of the model and a measurement so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to create a cube, just a simple cube. And now, according to this, this is 10, 20, and we'll measure right here. Okay, so 20, 25, 26, 27, like 28 millimeters. All right, so we now know that the height of this needs to be 28 millimeters. Okay, wrong size. 28 millimeters. Oh my goodness, I'm terrible at this. 28 millimeters. All right. So let's set this to two. Set this to two. All right. Now the important thing is now in real life, real size, this is the actual size. So we need to build our models based off this fact. All right. So now I'm going to grab this press S for scale and I'm going to increase the picture to be the perfect size. So the reason is if we're going to build a base I want to make sure that the any details or unique things I create is going to uh, fit on the base. I don't want to accidentally uh, work so hard and then for the base to not even matter. So over here I'm going to scale, create it bigger until we have it perfectly measured to 28 which was a little bit smaller than this. So that's 25, 26, 27, 28. So there, perfect. So this is our measuring stick. We now have the perfect height of this, and this picture is now adjusted to the height. So in real life, if we built a one to one based off these dimensions, it'll be the perfect size as the real life one now. All right, so we'll keep this. And now, since we created this very important measuring stick, I'll grab this and say, I'll well, call it what it is, 28 millimeters. Very important. So creating these little measuring sticks is very important when you're dealing with pictures. You take a picture of whatever you need. If you want to make a shoulder pad piece, you take a picture of a shoulder pad from the front, from the side, and from the top with uh, measuring. And then you create these to help measure. And so whatever you create in here will be true to real life size. Very important. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we got our picture off to the side, we got our measuring stick off to the side, so now we're going to add a new uh, tool of ours. So what we're going to do is go to Edit, Preferences, and we're going to look for Carver. You're going to select that, and boom. So this is a very important thing for like cutting and trimming objects. So right, let's Shift A, let's add a cube. Very small now at this size. So let's scale that up, boom. Oh, here's another thing that I have installed. Shift D clones things. All right. So let's just put this off to the side. This is here. Alt G to recenter it. Now with a carver. Now we select your item. Shift X. No. Control Shift X. There it is. <coughs> so Control Shift and X while you have an item selected creates this. It basically what this allows is you click on the th uh, screen and you drag this out. And you left click and it slices off chunks of the mesh. Nice. 
Now, I'll point you to this cursor depth. Press D to activate this on off. So basically what this means is if you have it on and you select this, it will cut the mesh up to the point where it gets in the way to here. So this is a way if you want to cut part of a mesh away. I normally don't, but it's a tool you can use. So I'm going to undo yeah, undo that. Yes, press D, make sure that's off. And if we press space, we can go from creating rectangles to creating a line, which is where you can go like this. And then press space again. Boom. Sliced right away. Now, how is that important and useful? Well, let me show you. So, delete this. Let's create a clone of this. All right, so this. All right. So, let's press Alt-G. Yeah, close enough. Alt-G. Let's move this picture right here, maybe down a little bit. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this picture and we're going to move forward like so. All right, and then I'm going to grab this, select this item, and now we're going to press Control shift x and press Space, turn it to Line. All right, so basically, you can do this. It's a little finicky at times. Like sometimes it just doesn't work for some reason there and press space and boom so let me right click off that and it has now created basically a silhouette of this now yeah sometimes it's finicky so uh, if you'll notice uh, there are some gaps so we're just gonna press tab or press this for edit mode uh, let's select yeah this is a slight problem with when doing a lot of cutting is that these things happen uh, quite a lot, unfortunately. So, hmm, actually, you know what? There's an easier way to do this. Hold on. I will show you a technique. So we can grab these, press F, and fill them in, and you're going to get a bunch of crappy... <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is a, actually takes a very long process of making meshes and stuff, so it's a hobby within a hobby. All right, so this was a bit terrible. So I'll show you a better way to do this. So let's just delete this sucker. All right, Shift A. Let's create a very small plane. It's all not small. And then let's rotate this 90 degrees. Yeah, using the camera work. Okay, now we got this very nice thin mesh. All right, so I'm gonna grab this, pull this out to here. Grab here and then press Control Shift X. We got that difference again. Select line. No, boom, 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 boom. Okay, good enough. And then space bar. Boom. Now we have this flat sheet. How is this any different? Well, all right. Now let's go to edit mode. Well, yeah, like so select everything press yeah press a to select everything press e to extend right click to undo it and then i'm just going to pull out boom so what is this useful for well apart from making small parts of the base or basic selections uh you can use it for making skulls so i get uh jpegs of skulls and stuff here and there and then i put a picture in front and then i just carve out a basic skull image and that's how I apply skulls to some of my bases and stuff is I just create it from a picture reference where I carve it out here and then make it thick like so. So this is an important tool for uh, let's say you have the want to make an ultramarine symbol. Go on the internet get a picture of it just bring it in here and then with this using this tool you can sculpt out the basic lines of an ultramarine symbol. Alright so now another thing we're going to do is you may want to create like smooth tubes or smoothing. So first, for making a smooth tube, let's add a cylinder. Shift A brings up this menu. Cylinder. As soon as that's created, there'll be this little thingy that appears right there. And let's select the vertices. Normally, it starts at 32 vertices. That's where it normally starts off. And it looks like this. Lots of polygons. Let's make it 90 because our computer is strong and can handle it. Now, this is much smoother. This is good for like round stuff. So at this level, this is two millimeters. So this is like, this will look like a tiny little nugget uh, when it's printed. So let's actually increase the scale of this, make it something usable. All right, 
Now, here's an important thing. So sometimes you'll see like if you're going into 3D printing stuff, you'll see lots of these like polygons instead of super smooth or anything like that. So if you're just building like say if this is a pipe, this is going to be a pipe part of a base or something like that. But you see all these little polygons, it looks bad. And if it's large enough, it's going to be very noticeable. So what we're going to do, selecting our object, we're going to press tab, go to edit mode like so. We're going to go to lines. All right, so we need to grab all these lines, hold control to do this quick thing. All right, and then we're going to right click on this. And then where is it down here? Mark seam. And because I can't remember if it's one of these two, mark sharp as well. Yeah. All right, and we're going to repeat the same thing down here. All right, control, 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 control. All right, mark seam, mark sharp as well. All right, so basically what this is, is now we're going to go and we're going to smooth this out. All right. So what we did with this is when marking seam, it's either mark seam or mark sharp. They both do something, but it's pretty similar. So basically what it is, is what we've done is now we've selected and point out that these lines and stuff will be a hard edge, hard edge, won't be smooth. So what we do now to smooth this over, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go press this, we're going to hit this thing with three, fate, uh, three circles, this triangle thingy, click normals, we're going to click auto smooth, yeah. Auto smooth, 30 degrees is fine enough. Then we're going to right click on the object here and shade smooth, and it will turn it into a perfectly smooth thing. All right, so this is a very important tool. This is a tool designed to help us sculpt very fast and is really useful for me to make things essentially well, with very simple models. If there's like thousands of like vertices and like all those edges and stuff, this won't really work too well. But with something with simple shapes and stuff like that, you can easily do something great. So what I do is I want to trim and cut off a bunch with a very specific thing. So I have this box here, and then I have this giant box here. This box exists entirely for right angles. So I moved it at a 45 degree angle, and I want to trim some off of this. So what I do is this is a tool that if you collide its body into another thing, you can remove whatever is inside that other body. So what you do is, so I want this here. I'm going to click this screwdriver on the right. Click Add Modifiers. We're going to Boolean. This is our bread and butter. We have it select to Difference. These will do other things, but we have it on Difference. So this has this modifier on. We're going to click this dropper, and whatever thing we press, it's going to be modified. So you see this, this orange line stuff? When I press this, boom, the orange is gone. So it's showing me what is going to happen. I'll point out, if you drag this up and down, your computer will slow down because it's redoing calculations. But basically now, this cube is cut apart by this. Now we press this and apply, and boom. And now, this has been sculpted like so. All right, and we can do that any number of times, as long as it works. Boolean, let's do that again. Grab this and boom. And with this, we can sculpt and create a lot of interesting things. So now, let's get out of the way. Let's grab our cylinder. Let us rotate this this way. Let's do 90 degrees. Okay, it's a little too big. So let's scale it down in size. Yes. So let's bring this up. Let's make some holes. So we're going to grab this. Uh, this is good right here. So we're going to go and yeah, right there. That's fine. That's good. So now we're going to grab this main object. Going to go Boolean difference. We're going to grab this cylinder. Boom. And apply. And now we pull this out and boom, look, there's this perfect hole right there. You can use this technique for rapidly sculpting down things as you need instead of doing the whole edit or the whole edit and extrude or grabbing the faces and moving them however you like and stuff like that. This is this could be faster so you could rapidly drill holes or stuff like that. Or probably one of the more interesting things uh, to create like a perfect circle, let's create a UV spear. Let us scale that up clearly. Well actually no wait before that. Hold on. Hold on, let me start again. <laughs> So when you first created this is when you have to do it. A UV sphere. 
increase the edges. Let's increase this to, I don't know, 60. Make it more round. That way it's smoother. Now we're going to increase its size. Okay, that's pretty smooth. So, Alt-G to center it onto the cursor. Let's move it up here. Let's move this over here. Let's scale it up a bit. Let's scale up a bit more. All right. Boom. 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 Like so. Apply. Move this. Boom. A circle. Based exactly off of that. This will be useful for you for creating, like, well, whatever you want to. All right, so I'm going to show you how to create curves, uh, basically to curve your meshes or your models. Like, say, if you're making like an ultramarine uh, p uh, shoulder pad piece to go on your shoulder pad or as some symbol or logo, you want it to curve around the shoulder pad to fit on it. So I'm going to show you how to do this. First, I created this big wide block, and the measurements are not important, but it's like go wide this way. So we're going to go into edit mode, and we're going to press Control R. Oh wait, actually, hold on, first before that, select the whole thing, okay, Control R. Now, we're going to move our mouse around until you see something like this. You can find it on other aspects as well, or other edges like this. But we want to do it on this way. So what you can do is you're going to click, dog on it. Hold on, Control R, yes. And what we're going to do is first rotate our mouse wheel. So what we're doing is we're adding like lines or edges in, and we want a lot. Yeah, this is good enough. And then we click once, and it allows us to move things around. We just want it around the middle. Good. So these are essentially all these faces, edges, and bends. Now we're going to do the same thing again. But this time, Control R. We want this. Duck on that. Keep jumping the gun. Then roll the mouse wheel. Create a bunch of these. Click, click. Now we have this big, complicated device. It's filled with edges and stuff. All right, now what we want to do is we're going to go to object mode, and we're going to want the origin of this, the center mass, on one side. We're going to do this, set origin to 3D cursor, and voila, it's going to be important in a moment. All right, and now what we need is we're going to press Shift A. We're going to create a curve, a Bezier curve. And then we're going to press S, scale, bring this thing up. So I've already created one, but so what to do is this is an object. This is a very important object. So let's say you have a picture or something you want. You press tab to go into edit mode and you see these. So select whichever one you want, press G to grab it and you can pull it out and do whatever. Or grab one of these, press G to grab it and you can move this and the curve moves around with it. You can do the same thing with over here. The curve moves around with it, however you like. And you grab one, press E to extrude and create a whole new little curve. And so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take one of this and you're going to build it and create like a curvature around. So if you're building like a bit for a shoulder pad, you would want to have this curve be the perfect size for a shoulder pad. You can use pictures to help you or you can try to pre-make a shoulder pad piece. I'm not going to show you how to do that so you can figure out why. I don't want to get screwed over by GW. And so basically, you're going to create a curve that's going to be the, the curve you want. So I'm going to delete this because I already have a better one. Voila. Now, once you have this curve, we're going to take the object we want with its many faces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to this blue screwdriver while selecting the object, add modifier, curve. Now, there's many different axes to use, but we only want the X for right now, or the one that works. I mean, we find that out. I'm going to click on the dropper, then I'm going to click on the bezier, and boom, it's going to start creating a curve. And now with this, we're going to move this in and out. And for some reason, I have no idea why this curve is so far out here. Oh, that's why. So we can adjust and move the curve, and this thing is going to move with it. So selecting this, so it's going to curve along here, along its X. So it's only going to do the X for right now, like so. So imagine if this is a shoulder pad and you created like an intricate symbol and stuff out of this. It will now follow this. And so once you press this and apply, boom, it is now like that. All right. Now let us adjust the camera with one, rotate this 90 degrees. 
And get rid of these little numbers. Alrighty then. Now, <coughs> we are going to make this curve another way. So, Alt G. No, no, we don't want that. We want that there. We want to set origin to 3D cursor. That's good enough, I guess. And uh, let's move that over here. Origin to 3D cursor. Yes. Now we're going to move this up top here. Now we're going to add another modifier, a curve. This time we want Y. We're going to put it on this. And hmm, okay, maybe wrong way. X. Yes, okay, X seems to be universal. And then like so. And now you will notice it is curving inward like this. This way it can wrap around. This could even be for knee pads if you wanted to. Yes. Actually, let me stop this for a moment. Let me increase the height of this. So scale, press Z to increase that. Increase the height. Yes. Now, curve, dropper, boom. And now let's pull this down and boom. It looks like a nice knee pad, actually. But this could be made out of anything. In fact, to demonstrate that, let me actually make a few slight modifications by carving this sucker up. So, with that difference, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. This is just a show, essentially, uh, the artsiness. Have this back in the middle, grab this, curve, dropper, let's select this, boom. I'm going to rotate this down. It has wherever we like. We can go right and left. It's not going to matter. It's only going to matter right up here. So the reason why it's curving like this is because we this is wherever we set the origin, that's where it's going to uh, curve towards. So wherever the origin or the base of this object is, that's going to affect it, and it's going to curve towards this uh, thing. Yeah, it's a nice little knee pad. It has all these details and all this stuff in. All the curves are there. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Now we're going to click Apply. Nice. Now, let's actually test something we learned a bit earlier with the edit mode. Got these lines. Grab. Hold shift. Oh, no. Hold. Talk on it. Grab this. Hold control. Yes. Grab all those lines. Yes. 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 And so basically what we're going to do is get all the ones line. Let's see how well we can smooth this sucker out. Yes. Uh, quick and rapid work. Yeah. Alright, now that we have this thing done, let us mark seam. And mark sharp as well, because I can't remember which one's which. Uh, we can do the same to the middle, but this is just to show off this. Let's do auto smooth right there. Right click, uh, get into object mode, and shade smooth. Boom. Smooth. And still keeps these sharp lines right here, but is much smoother. Of course, like you can see little faces here. That's not a problem because this is actually going to be the size of your pinky nail or smaller. So you're not going to notice these. All right. That's a very useful tool for creating all the symbols and stuff you want to curve around, whatever. You can use this for creating a flag as well. All right, and now the next tool I'm going to show you is how to make text and how to turn into an object that you can manipulate and all that stuff. So we're going to do is Shift A. You're going to create text and uh, scale this up a bit, but it's flat. So we'll press three for the camera to turn it to the right. Zoom in. R to rotate. Let's move this sucker up. Uh, clean that up 90 degrees perfectly. All right, press one on the camera. Boom, we got this. All right, now let's change what well it says from text. We're going to press tab or to go to edit mode, and you can select it up here. And now you can change whatever. So let's change it to a very easy <laughs> to remember word. Yeah, yes. And tab to go back. All right, <coughs> let's set origin to geometry. And then press Alt G so it'll center on this. Let's move this up a little bit. Nice. And then set origin to 3D cursor. All right. Now it's on a line. Now we can't do anything with this because this is a text object. So now we have to turn this into 
well, whatever we would uh, into an into an object, a mesh that we can actually uh, mold around with. So what we're going to do is we're going to cl right click on it and click convert to mesh. Boom! It is now a mesh. You would have noticed the change up here. Then we're going to press tab. Look at all these vertices. We're going to press A, select everything. We're going to press E to create a new set, and we will just move it eh, back or forth, whichever we like. Press, go back to object mode using tab, and boom, we now have a mesh. And now with this, we can adjust it however we want. We can uh, use the Boolean stuff and uh, actually, let's do it. we can carve out the word wall onto this object here. So let's go right here, or we could ingrain it on top. So, on here, modifier, boolean, this might have a failure chance simply because of how complicated the thing is, so, nope, perfect. Yes, we have carved wa into this block. This is an important tool when working with text, if you want to create like some special purity seals, or maybe some names, or like you want to create like a name and have it curve around on a storm shield, or a shoulder pad, or whatever. Now you can have that just uh, pop right out. So that's just one of many tools you can use. Fun and useful. All right, and now we're going to sculpt. So for sculpting, we need a object that has a lot of vertices or polygons essentially. So Shift A, you can create a UV sphere. Set this in the center. Scale this up. All right, then we're going to press Control Shift X. We're going to get rid of the top part here. There, nice flat on the bottom. All right, so now what we're going to do is going to grab this. We're going to go to Modifier Properties. We're going to do Multi Resolution. This is going to cut it down a lot. Now there's a limit to how much your computer can handle, and if you have multiple objects on this, it's going to slow down your project a bit. So real time two. I'm going to do it twice. Take its time, and there. That's pretty good. Maybe three. I don't know if my computer catches on fire. Let's see. Taking its time, and there. Okay. Very smooth. So let's apply this. And in edit mode, this is what it looks like lots of vertices, and whatever that is, uh, let us actually just get rid of that. Yes. Nice and smooth. I... Alrighty then. Yeah, let us get this down to here. Set origin to geometry. Where is my 3D cursor? Yeah, well. Miles away. There we go. Still miles away. Whatever. Okay, now that that's done, we are going to go to sculpt mode. Now, I'm going to get rid of this. Oh, whatever. Alright, so we're going to go over here, we're going to click on this, and this shows up all our stuff. So, these are different tools you can do. So, this is like draw, draw sharp, add clay. Hold control to do the opposite. So you have this here, direction, add, subtract. So this will be whatever you want it to do. If you press this, it'll do the opposite, but you can also hold control and it'll do the opposite of what you were planning. And so with all these different, uh, all these many polygons allow for all this. If you did this like on a cube, you would get nothing because there's no polygons to warp. So pinch. Yeah. So these are the tools of the trade. However, let's say we're making a ground floor for a base. So all right, we got this. In object mode, scale, Z. Let's flatten this baby. Yes, that's good enough. Let's grab this sucker, bring it down. All right, and then back to sculpt mode. Now, I'm going to go to draw. Now you're going to go to this, this checkerboard down here, and you're going to create it to add a texture. 
you're going to have to buy these. You might be able to find some free. You can make some if you have Photoshop. I do, but I'm not going to get into how to do that. Essentially, you uh, bring in your paintbrushes, essentially, which is just essentially an image. And then you select which of these tools you're going to use. I'm selecting Draw. I'm going to check Draw Sharp right now. I have the texture selected here. Ah, crap. Yeah, select that texture. And then press 7 to fix the camera. I'm going to press once. Boom. Press twice. Boom. Three, four. So I'm going to zoom out to tad. Make sure the whole center is in there. And then press boom. Press it again. Boom. Boom. All right. That's nice canyons. That's nice dirt. Now I have another one. Should be sand, yes. Let's add this sand texture. Yes, sand texture. I'm going to go up to here and go like boom. And now that's a bit too much. Okay, so. Yes, 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 and yes. All right. Mm, you can play around the settings with the smooth and stuff. Now, even though it looks a little bit jagged, like right up to here, when you print it, it's going to end up coming out a bit smoother. Maybe this sand was a little too much. So you have to uh, really adjust it each time. So let's see what happens with some auto smoothing. A little too much. Well, that's essentially it. So I paintbrushed this image, which was this dirt and texture stuff, and it created this flat piece, which can be part of a base. And so essentially, you can use this to create whatever you want. Oof. Yeah. And so this is how you sculpt. You have to have something with a lot of faces or vertices, polygons, in order to do something like this. And yeah, it's something you have to practice with to get good with. Yeah. And then once you're done with that, go to object mode and you have this complicated object, which you can do whatever with. Yeah, increase that height. Yeah. So this is just one of many tools you can use. It's an interesting uh, facet. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, you're gonna ha uh, this part. You you have to get your own brushes. You're gonna have to find a way to do that. And yeah, I mean, these are all the tools that I use. Now, in the next video, I'll show you all how to well actually make it work together. Now, before I go, the overall idea is to create a base vanilla scene. You go to the top right file and you click save and you save your scene. So what I have is essentially I have a scene that has. A bunch of pre made assets, measuring sticks, tools, and stuff like that of backpacks, shoulder pads, knee pads, different Bezier curves for different sizes and stuff. And so, this base scene is what is used uh, for well, creating more stuff. So, if I want to go off into a specific chapter, I will go into this and I'll click save as, save as that file, and then I will produce the items here. And so it's just a repertoire of past projects I have done, past items and images I can easily go back to. And so I have all the stuff. Yeah, don't save. And then my custodies bases that I made. Or, yeah, and so these are simple reservoirs. And so these are the bases I made for the custodies. I have these in the background, I have these different versions, and then I have the pieces. Here. Yes. All the different pieces here and there as such. And so I can go back and rebuild over here. I have the different size bases, different tests, different things, failures as well. So in the next video I'll actually make some bases. I'll show you how it's done or how I do it. And then also exporting them into the STL and all that stuff so 
All right, so like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, or ask any questions um, in case I missed something or something is not that clear or something like this. This is meant to be a, a reservoir of all my knowledge on the subject. Mm -hmm. And in the next video, I will actually make my Gene Sealer Cult bases. And uh, yeah, they'll be coming out soon. So, bye.